We need scripture to form us and remind us of the, uh, the posture that we need to have. Aaron, this is a podcast I have been looking forward to doing for a long time. Why are you giggling? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to make a serious point here. Okay. This is, this is a really important topic. I've wanted to address it for a long time because there's been a lot of times where I've offered you feedback and critique <laughs> and you've resisted. <laughs> you haven't been as teachable oh as you need to gosh. be. <laughs> wow, you're starting out with <laughs> guns blazing, aren't you? Well, you know, I liked it, like I said. I like to be authentic <laughs> with our audience and just share our own personal struggles. And particularly, I like to share your your struggles. <laughs> yeah. um, no, you like to be sarcastic and point that at me at any opportunity you have. That's what that's you like. That's my love language. <laughs> do you feel loved? I do. <laughs> I really do. Uh, no, this is, I mean, well, it's it's good to enter into this conversation with some humor <laughs> because humor is disarming and uh, we need to be disarmed a little bit on this one <laughs> because there are a lot of times and a lot of ways that we as parents are not as teachable or maybe just not teachable mm -hmm. like we like we need to be, like we should be. And uh, in fact, that's the opening question. That's the reflection question for today's podcast, parents. Um, are you unteachable? What are ways in which you are not teachable? Hmm. Uh, how are parents around you unteachable? Um, and, and thinking through how we might not be as teachable as we need to be really uh and in doing so, prohibit our own growth. So we may we may be uh, keeping the Lord from doing some of the work He needs to do in us. Mm. I, as I was thinking about this topic, uh, us covering this, I was wondering if parents who are unteachable also have this problem in other areas. Like maybe you're just the kind of person that just isn't real teachable in all kinds of areas. Mm. So that could be the case that that some of these things we're going to describe is actually how you behave in business. It's how you behave in your marriage. Yeah. It's how you behave in all kinds of relationships. But I also thought I I bet though that some of us are that in this area of parenting maybe maybe we are teachable in business and marriage, but when it comes to parenting maybe we aren't as teachable and then mm. underneath that maybe because there's some fear or insecurities that yeah. come up in that so it's it's a complicated topic but it's good to think about like are, well, are I, we teachable overall as a person or is this area maybe hard for us to yeah, be teachable uh, i think i think that's a great distinction to think about uh because there there might be some general character issues mm -hmm. that we struggle with yeah and we we're, we're talking about we here we're you know not just we're not pointing the finger <laughs> out there mm -hmm. there are ways in which we have to keep examining ourselves and are we you know are we teachable yeah even as you know you you grow in your wisdom in your your age aaron <laughs> Um, with a lot of age, a lot of age has come wisdom. Are you, I, I want to affirm you. You've gotten a lot of a lot of wisdom there. But uh, no, yeah. So is it a general character trait? That's mm -hmm. something to think about because then it's going to manifest itself all over the place. Yeah. Is or is there something specific? Maybe this is an area. There's something specific to parenting, and it could be that this one's maybe a more personal. Okay, so for instance, I mean, when it comes to, uh, you know, auto mechanics. I don't you don't even, even know the words. <laughs> That's how bad you are with cars. You're like, what's the word? 
<laughs> wow. I you was... just revealed <laughs> an area of insecurity. <laughs> that was an insecurity. And shallow knowledge. That had nothing to do with insecurity. <laughs> that had everything to do with ignorance. <laughs> I am ignorant when it comes to Auto automotive. I was, <laughs> uh, I was trying to think, okay, auto mechanics automotive <laughs> and i was thinking automotive mechanics doesn't sound good so these are you know this is the dialogue going on in my head mm -hmm. but clearly uh that is an area where i lack knowledge i lack competence uh <laughs> i'm ignorant <laughs> Uh, anything else you want to add there, Aaron? <laughs> no, I'm just oh, loving just this part. Okay, just laugh. <laughs> but so when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, a friend who has a lot more knowledge about cars and how to fix them, mm -hmm. I'm really teachable. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, when it comes to my cars, I don't, I don't take that personally. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to our kids, that's a, a little more, and not a, just a little more, that's a lot more personal issue such that if someone were to say well no you're not doing it right this is the way you should do it okay wow that now penetrates a little deeper and gets maybe to some of my sense of who i am mm -hmm. and so yeah so i think your distinction is very is is helpful to think about and and i'm just thinking wh what we're doing here in this podcast is not a popular thing <laughs> And this isn't how you make friends. Yeah. So some of you might like, maybe some people may have already turned this <laughs> off. Like it's no, nah, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go into this very personal mm -hmm. uh, space here. But it is it is a challenge. I, I just this topic is a challenge because I think the personal nature of it, and uh, we we may be defensive as parents. And so, in fact, that might be one of the indicators that we're not teachable. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the, a defensive posture whenever there's a hint of criticism or feedback mm -hmm. or any hint of correction. Mm -hmm. If we are just automatically defensive, that's not a good sign, even if the correction is maybe unwarranted. Yeah, I think... We could probably be defensive as in par as parents in different ways. So we can be defensive. We've talked about this a little bit in our conversations about coddling our kids. And so we were quick to blame other people. So we're kind of defensive of our kids. And so in that way, like not taking criticism of our kids. But in this way, so thinking about that, because that might mean that we are thinking that everything our kid does is a reflection of us as a mm, parent. Yeah. And so there goes the insecurity stuff that I was talking about early. And that is very hard. I think that's probably as a mom, that's probably the, where I'm maybe most defensive is that when my kids do something wrong, not internalizing that as, and they've done that because you're a terrible mother. Yeah. So the kind of defensiveness, though, that we're talking about today is, you know, as a parent, are you defensive when someone might say to you, hey, have you thought about not letting your kid do this? Or it seems like, you know, your kid's kind of rude with their grandma. Or, you know, you think of different, yeah. different scenarios. And so are we defensive or any in any way just if there's any kind of criticism or or something like that pushed towards us now this is messy because you know a mother-in-law offering criticism to a daughter-in-law <laughs> that's that could be messy you know has, sometimes has the, it ever been messy for you <laughs> let's, let's explore that oh a little bit gosh. more I'm giving examples to the people <laughs> so they can understand what I'm trying to get at. So it, it's messy sometimes who the criticism is coming from, of course. Yeah. But yeah. do we, are we open to any kind of criticism? Yeah. And I mean, then there's the whole issue of there's a lack of maybe speaking into each other's lives too, where 
a lot of maybe the, the pendulum, pendulum swings and no one offers any advice or counsel to anyone anymore because it's like, well, those, those aren't my kids and I can't say any, and I'm not going to say anything and I'm not going to be judge, quote unquote judgmental. So there's that aspect too that plays in here. Um, and so they're actually, that, that, they're, that's a whole nother issue where we don't, there's not a rich sense of community. There aren't strong ties amongst not just friends and the church and the body of Christ, but even within families as well. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we do need to think, you know, and, and probably I'm guessing that for a lot of us, that context is probably going to be within the family where there's going to be someone who maybe cares enough or um, is, uh, yeah, kind of invested enough to say something. So, and I think, you know, close friends or... Well, close friends should, yeah. but how often do close friends really speak that kind of truth into each other's lives? We need to do it more. In yeah. fact, we, I mean, I, I shared with you... Um, uh, somebody in our church recently uh, pointed out something that one of our kids had done, and and he came, he had a really good attitude about it. It was very gentle, but it was um, something that I had to think about. Like, okay, my kid did this, and probably needed to take some action to correct it. How am I going to receive that? you know, mm -hmm. as a, an adult. And I'm glad that we, we have a kind of a, a church community where we can do that with one another yeah. because we are so, the, the, the ties in our culture are so weak, but our kids and us need rich community mm -hmm. and the body of Christ should be a rich community. So, but all that to say, if you are defensive whenever there's any correction or whenever there's an implication or or if the mother or father-in-law or mom or dad say something to you, your first response is just immediately defensive, then we want to, you, you want to explore that and think about, okay, why? Why am I defensive? And uh, is there, yeah, how, how much of my sense of self is tied up in my parenting and how my kids end up and where they end up. And, and that is all, boy, that, that's a complicated mess to unravel. <laughs> and frankly, it points to the fact that we all need a bunch of um, Christian counseling. <laughs> we need therapy. Yes. No, no, but we, we, we do need biblical community. We need biblical help. Mm -hmm. And that may include Christian counseling because we're just, we're just a big mess. Well, it, Thinking that we need help leads to the second thing that we were thinking about when it comes to, okay, are we teachable? And so kind of the signs that might be that we are not teachable is first that we're defensive when criticism comes. Second, that we're proud, and which is the opposite of humble. So if you know you need help, then that, you know, that's a humble, that's a humbling thing to say. So is your posture normally like, no, I've got this. I've got this pretty good and mm -hmm. got my kids figured out or, you know, got things figured out. Don't really need to, to talk to other people or get any kind of advice or seek out wisdom from others. It's like, no, I mean, in general, I kind of feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. That could be a sign that you're, you might not be a teachable person, a yeah. teachable parent. Yeah, de I'd say definitely. You don't need to sugarcoat that one. <laughs> <laughs> you are not teachable. I, I mean, to the degree that you are are proud, um, and uh, and then I think there's other vices that kind of come along with that. The arrogance, uh, you know. Then yeah, that is definitely going to pre prevent you from being teachable mm -hmm. and. And that is, that's not a good place to be. Uh, obviously, there are scriptural warnings against pride. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and and so, yeah, and, and I think pr that pride will, will also lead us 
into maybe some other things where like number three, we, we become judgmental mm -hmm. of other parents. We're very proud and we then start looking down on how other people are doing things and, or just even, even if they're doing things wrong or, or, uh, or, or things that are unwise or, or whatever they may be, our response is not grace, mm -hmm. but it's judgment. Yeah. And I that one I think is probably the one that I would say like if I were to personally you know confess my sins here publicly <laughs> um I, that's the one I I think I probably struggle with is 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 being judgmental mm -hmm. and not being you know and not being gracious. Mm. Uh and so that's something but God has ways of chipping away at that. <laughs> yeah. And of humbling us. Yes. And one of the biggest ways he chips away at that is your own kids struggle. Right. And you may think that you got this parenting thing all down <laughs> and there are, and you oh, could gosh. actually be a pretty wise parent. Mm -hmm. And, and as we've talked about before, you will never be able to guarantee the outcomes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that is a great way that the Lord uses um, even in the struggle to form our character. Yeah. And we're going to talk about ways to become teachable, but I think... But right now we just want to lay everyone I, bare. We, <laughs> we just, just want, want to talk expose about all the, you. But I, the judgmental thing, I think, is... I'm sure it's something we all have struggled with oh, you in different for sure. seasons of You are of judgmental. Parenting, whatever. So um, I remember my judgment, my most judgmental stage of parenting was when we had just our our daughter and she one was kid. just, one, just kid. one kid. And she her toddler year, I mean, it was it was pretty easy. It was a breeze, really. I mean of course, she, you know, whatever, was naughty and got in trouble. But a pretty she, a compliant kid. Compliant. She didn't throw fits on the ground. You know, she didn't do some of these things that I saw. And so I did have this kind of like, this is, you know, this isn't as hard as I've seen in the target aisles. You know, like I've seen kids melt down. And I don't think it has to get to that. You when, know, when you went to the Target Isles, <laughs> because clearly, I mean, you did a podcast a little while ago. You don't go to the About Target Isles to anymore. Target. Okay, the Costco aisles, <laughs> the Walmart aisles. But so I remember seeing little kids throwing fits, and I was like, "Well, I'm. Pro I think this was probably before I was a parent too, and that's probably when we all can honestly say." Like we were the best parents when we had no children because we were like, <laughs> oh yeah, this is, I'm going to do things differently than my parents. This is going to be great, mm -hmm. you know, and then we become parents. Yeah. But that for me, and then what happened to me was that we had more children <laughs> and then their, their hard stages were different. Yeah. We introduced more sinners into our <laughs> into home. Into our home. And, and that increased the amount of sin in our it, home. It does. So it, God does have a way of humbling us in our judgment of other people. And it takes away the pride that we mm. we used to think, no, 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 I've got yeah. this. And then we realize, oh, no, no, no I don't. Yeah. I don't got this. And sometimes it, 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 it will take different stages. So it might be like, oh, hey, yeah, my kids are at the younger stages. And there is... Um, uh, in some ways, you, you look at the younger stages and say, well, those stages actually can be easier when kids are generally more compliant uh, and they're reliant on mom and dad a lot more. And and you might think, oh, things are going really good. I got this. I got this <laughs> thing right now. I, you know, I've got this dialed in. And hey, uh, you may be humbled when they get into the 12 and 13 and 14 year old stage and you know uh high school and especially if they're girls oh my gosh <laughs> i just had to throw that in <laughs> um you're joking be clear on that you're joking i'm joking not joking um <laughs> no the uh uh the, the the challenge of the 
you know, for some, those teenage years, when they're becoming more of adults and they have some independent thinking and maybe they, they want to go their own route and some of that compliance is gone. Anyway, that has a way of humbling you. Yeah, That has a way of helping you to see, mm, gosh, you know, I really thought I had it all together and <laughs> maybe I don't. So again, another, another ways that, another way that we may just kind of express mm-hmm. this, this, um, deeper sense of not being teachable. teachable. So the last thing we had thought of you and I, as we were brainstorming, okay, what ways in our own lives and then in, in, you know, the people we've seen, what ways are people, are we not teachable? And we thought about the tendency now to go to technology for advice, Google, to Google things before we go to human beings and ask for advice or yeah. help. And I was thinking about, okay, so why does this, why might this show that we're not teachable? I mean, we're seeking yeah. advice, we're Googling it. Right, there's a little bit of irony here. Like yeah. you may not be that teachable if you go and ask questions to Google, mm-hmm. you know, parent questions at Google. And, you, and again, your first impulse is like, wait, no, wait a second. You're going and you're yeah. asking questions. Yeah, like, wait, I'm I'm looking for answers. But the reason why Google is easier than going to ask a friend who's older or a mentor who's older or a mother-in-law or, you know, a grandma's is that that's personal and Google is anonymous and... They're not, Google's not going to say, well, Brett, I've noticed this about you and this could be affecting this issue with your kid. Mm -hmm. And so it's impersonal. We can stay behind the screen and we won't have a lot of ouch moments. Yeah. And if I don't like the advice that I read, mm, let me find another article. (laughs) I can just skip on to another article. I can just ignore that. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a little more difficult to ignore the person who's standing in front of you who's trying to speak some truth into your mm-hmm. life, right? So yeah, so the impersonal nature of technology actually, can, and that's where you go first, may be an indication that you're not as teachable. Yeah. Not It doesn't necessarily mean that, but that's something to consider. Mm-hmm. Um, and so why, you know, I, I think we, we need to think about what it means to be human. You know, we're embodied creatures. We are built for face-to-face relationships and interactions. Mm -hmm. And those things are actually better for us, but they can be more painful. But that's actually a good sign too, because the the, the face-to-face, the more personal it is, the more, well, the more insightful it can be. Google, Google's not going to be able to look into your life and and help you see your blind spots, Mm -hmm. you know, but that, that spouse or that close friend may be able to do that and be willing to, you know, speak directly into it. So it's much more personal that way, but it's also better for us. So, so those are all different. And I just want to add that a line that I say to our kids and to, I've said to other people that I love to say, but it's that Google has no wisdom. And so oftentimes in these parenting things, we need wisdom. What we need is wisdom. Mm-hmm. And so Google's not going to give us that. Mm-hmm. We, we need people who have learned things, who have knowledge of life and knowledge of God, knowledge of how we are as human beings, knowledge of sin, Mm -hmm. and then they've learned to live these things out. And so they have wisdom. They have, and they they have skill knowledge, which I think Mm -hmm. is connected to wisdom, right? It's, uh, there's different kinds of knowledge we can have, but there's certainly uh, what we might call skill knowledge where you really know how, it's like developing that Mm know-how. And over time, just like someone can, work with auto mechanics or automotive <laughs> vehicles, <laughs> cars. <Good job. laughs> um, you can develop know-how or skill knowledge over time 
where you can you can see things better more clearly you get you have more insight you uh even if you haven't done all the whatever the uh kind of all the book reading if you will Mm -hmm. and in the same way in parenting there are some people who have gained wisdom Mm -hmm. and skill knowledge over time um in their own parenting and uh so yeah we we need that kind of wisdom and technology often can't provide that. Yeah. Yeah. You think about like some of the best teachers we all have had. And a lot of times they are the older teacher that has been doing it for a while. And, and that's what we're talking about. It's someone who has, has gained wisdom and, and the internet doesn't, doesn't offer that. Yeah. So really those are, those are ways and questions and issues to think about to help us do some self-assessment. And that might be a little bit painful. Uh, and some of us have blind spots. And it might be, um, well, we'll give some practical things on, on dealing with this. But I think this first half of the podcast is really to just think about some maybe symptoms mm-hmm. that are the result of us not being teachable. Symptoms not just that we see in other people, <laughs> but symptoms I see in you, but honey. Symptoms that we see actually in ourselves. Because <laughs> you go through these four we're defensive, we're proud, we're judgmental. We go to technology and we can all think of, oh yeah, I I should send this podcast to this person because <laughs> this is their problem. So really <laughs> hopefully that in that we can we can truly look at ourselves and think, are we a teachable person? Yeah. So how okay. do we become three steps. teachable people? Three steps. We want to put everything into three, <laughs> three easy, easy, practical steps. steps okay. <laughs> uh, no, but we we have three steps actually for this podcast. And the first one, which should be our general posture as uh, as Christians is that we let scripture form us. Let scripture form you. Uh, We want to develop a posture where we run to scripture first and foremost, above all things. We go to seek God's perspective. We go to gain his knowledge and understanding and wisdom. And so, yes, we need scripture to form us and remind us of the, uh, the posture that we need to have. And so the Proverbs is a great place where we see a constant uh, exhortation, constant instruction to be teachable. Uh, I'll just read a few of these Proverbs here. Like Proverbs 9, 9. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. And I think what's implicit here in this passage is that uh, we we should be teachable because it actually adds to our knowledge and wisdom, mm-hmm. right? Instruct the wise. Well, they're already wise. Well, then they will be wiser still. And if you are wise, you will be open to further instruction. <laughs> uh, and so just the posture in this passage is one of, I think, being teachable. Uh, Proverbs 12 one skip over a couple chapters whoever loves discipline loves knowledge but whoever hates correction is stupid <laughs> that's the uh Ouch. that's the niv i'm curious what like like new american standard or esv says i wonder if there's blunt but i like which to- does hurt i really mean ouch because who i don't want to be corrected but what a good reminder that if i don't want to be if I don't want correction, then I will remain dumb. I will hmm. have big gaps in how I am in my knowledge. But none of us want correction, but that that's a... Yeah. So this is that, I mean, there's a, a good a good assessment question. What mm-hmm. What is your posture towards correction? Do you, do you hate it? Do you dislike it? Are you... Uh, and, and, and there might, I don't know if maybe to dislike isn't the right word. Cause there might be a sense where you're like, well, in one sense, I dislike correction yeah. because it's painful, Yeah. but do you resist it? Mm. You know, uh, you, 
got Proverbs 19, verse 20. Uh, Listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you will be counted among the wise. Mm -hmm. Right? That's just, I mean, that's just straightforward. And uh, listening to advice, right? Accepting discipline. And that is one of the paths to wisdom, Mm -hmm. right? So we we all need that correction. And so you want, uh, if we all need that correction, we all need to be teachable. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'll resist that correction. And you see it in the New Testament as well. I mean, you think about uh, 1 Timothy 3.16, which is a passage that actually talks about the Word of God. But listen to what... um, the word of God does. And in, I think in what is what Paul lists here, uh, this is 2 Timothy 3.16, what he lists here uh, implies, I guess, our, something that we're going to need. <laughs> uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. Verse 17, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Think about that. Teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. That's, that's the, the scriptures in, inspired by God and therefore is useful for these things. Mm-hmm. And so there's the, 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 the scriptures are given to correct us. That's a central function here that's listed. And so obviously the implications in what we know of fallen humanity, sinful human beings, uh, and even those who are regenerate and um, who but still bear the marks of sin, like you, honey, <laughs> um, and me, right? We, uh, we are in need of correction. And, and that's, yeah, and that's why our first point is to let scripture form you. We didn't pick that. Like, oh, the Bible is the first thing. We, we picked that on purpose because Scripture will correct us like nothing else will. Yeah. And, and we want to start there because Scripture is, has a way of piercing right to our heart, helping us to reflect on ourself more than just comparing ourselves to others or so if we have this proud attitude like i admitted having when we had our first child or that we all have before we have kids um but scripture takes us out of comparing ourselves to other people and it now we're comparing ourselves to god and now w- we see things more clearly mm-hmm. and that's why scripture is so corrective and helps us to think more clearly about these things. So if we have the attitude, no, 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 I got this. Scripture reminds us, no, 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 you don't actually got this. You might be in a good season of peace where you've figured out, you know, how to help your kids flourish. But even in those good seasons, we need to stay humble and we need to stay teachable. Yeah. Well, you, then you have First Peter uh, chapter five, verse five, and and this is the now the context here is elders and the shepherding of the flock. But what is the what is the pa- posture of those of us who are in the body? It says in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves uh, to your elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Because, quote, God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. And so even in the context of the body of Christ, right, there's a, a, a humility that allows you to humble yourself and submit to the instruction, the teaching, the leadership, maybe sometimes the discipline of church leaders, and of course, um, I mean, there's a whole a whole lot more we could say on that. But clearly, to to do such a thing, you would have a posture of being teachable. Yeah, and clearly, from God's view, it's good for us to submit to 
our elders. Mm -hmm. And that can be in different areas, all different ways, obviously the church. But that seems to be a theme for God in relationship that we submit to one another and that we learn from people who are older than us, who have gone further than we have. Yeah, think about how uh, Peter puts it in verse five. All of you clothe yourselves in humility toward one another. Oh gosh, mm. um, it's it's not it's not a it's not just hey uh, try to be humble kind of thing. Like clothe yourselves in humility. Mm -hmm. to, like that is that 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 just speaks to a depth of of character, mm -hmm. right? That you're clothed in humility. Um, there aren't just moments where you're humble and to clothe yourselves in humility toward one another. And so that really should be the, the, the posture in our, our churches mm -hmm. and uh, with one another. So all that to say, that's just a sampling of the biblical uh, instruction. Of what our attitude should be. Yeah, we should be we Of should our be posture, teachable. yeah. So the second thing we thought of when it when we're thinking about okay how do we become teachable parents um, we're obviously talking in the area of parenthood of course this bleeds into other areas so how do we become teachable parents and we thought about some ways to help you think about yourself and maybe not your spouse or your friend that you're thinking about in the moment but actually yourself so to have some questions that you can maybe reflect on. And so one of them is, so to cr try to critique yourself, to ask yourself some questions. So one of those is, do you really want to learn from others? No. Or <laughs> do, uh, are you like <clears throat> Brett and stubborn <laughs> and you want to learn your own way? No, I mean, you think about like a stubborn toddler or something that's like, my way, my mm. way. You know, are we adult versions of that? Where, you right. know what? I really, I'm really not interested in learning from others. Mm. I, I'll, I'll figure it out. Like, I'm good. I'll figure it out. Yeah. And that, I mean, that goes along with the, uh, kind of in the, in the intro, we were talking about being proud, mm -hmm. right? So this is an assessment question to help you get at that, to help yeah. reveal you know, some of the character you or I struggle with. <laughs> uh, and and if we really, uh, I mean, we got to be honest with ourselves on this one. Do you really want to learn from others when it comes to the issue of parenting? Mm -hmm. And this is our, I mean, this is one of our most vital roles that we play as human beings is, is being a parent. It's some of the most important work that we are ever going to do. And... We don't want to be in a place where we're not willing to learn from others. We don't want to be in a place where we're not open to criticism. Um, and you know, and I just think about leadership, right? We talk about this like organizationally. We talk about this, um, you know, uh, kind of culturally or in business. And we talk about how leaders are learners. Mm -hmm. Well, let's also say that parents are learners, uh, and as leaders of our homes. We as parents need to be learners. We need to humble ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that means looking to others constantly for wisdom and, and guidance and advice. Yeah. So another reflection question in this area is where are you going for parental wisdom and advice? Do you go anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> and if you are going somewhere, where are you going? Is it just online? Is it just online? Is it um, maybe just with safe people who will agree with you about everything and they'll just be, you know, so sweet and affirming? Like I think about my grandma and I loved going, she, my grandma, I grew up with one of my grandmas next door and I loved going over there because with grandma, I could tell her any problem I was having and I was just always right. Like grandma was just, <laughs> she just was so encouraging. So we have those friends that we know that we can call them and they'll be like, they'll see it our way. They'll say like, you were totally right, all the things. So where are you going 
for your parental wisdom and advice. Yeah. And yeah. And do you have, do you have the, the kind of even people in your life who will faithfully wound you, right? Mm -hmm. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Do we have those kind of friends who would be willing to say, Hey, uh, let me graciously, but <laughs> honestly share some, some truth with you. Do we have yeah. those kind of friends? And I, it, it, our, I, well, I guess another just practical thing I'd add on to that is we may need to create intentional time for that because it's not, it doesn't often happen um, uh, just on its own. We might need to say, hey, let's get together for breakfast once a month and hold each other accountable, yeah. you know, or, you know, um, read a book together mm -hmm. or whatever it might be. Yeah, someone who will ask you, okay, how, how, how are things going? How is marriage what kind of wife are you and mm. what kind of mom you know how is how is that going i yeah. mean the, that's those are valuable people to have in our life so the next question of where are you going for advice and then how much of your resistance maybe to criticism and correction is tied into your sense of self ouch <clears throat> Now we're getting now we're getting deep. <laughs> so in other words, if someone so just imagine that someone came to you and said, "Hey, I'm I'm concerned about your kid or whatever. How much mm. would you would that hurt you?" And if it hurts you, why would it hurt you? And again, it could be because the person has been really hurtful to you and so that they're not a good person. But why Why would it hurt you if someone came and said, hey, it seems like your kid is super rude or it seems like they don't take instruction well or mm -hmm. it's, it seems like whatever, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Or, or someone came to you and said, hey, I'm concerned because you seem to be overprotecting your kid. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, so whatever it might be, yeah. Thinking, thinking about your response to that, yeah. your, your the response to the criticism. And is it wrapped up in the kind of person you see yourself, your value yeah. as a parent? Yeah. Okay. So thirdly, after we go to scripture, we do some self-assessment, uh, thirdly, what we can do is we can ask people that we respect and trust to give us feedback on our parenting. And again, now this takes intentionality. This one might make us a little uncomfortable, but uh, if there are people in your life who you, you trust and you respect and you think they have some wisdom, those would be good people to go and ask, hey, I'm just taking stock. Uh, I constantly wanna be a, a better parent. I wanna know if I have any blind spots, anything I'm not aware of or certain things I may miss with my own kid. Maybe I gloss over things with my own kid. I make excuses for my own kid. Whatever it might be, hey, would, would you go to coffee with me and just share like your perspective? And that time might actually be encouraging because they might say, hey, I think you're a great parent. I see you do this and this. And, and so that, there, that could be some encouragement there. Yeah. Um, and it also could be... Uh, some good pain where you hear some things that uh that you need you know we need to work on yeah. that maybe you where you're struggling or maybe that you've kind of turned a, bl a blind eye to or maybe it's a blind spot um but it's the kind of good pain it's the uh, it's the um it's the shaving off of maybe some rough edges and and but i mean think about gosh what kind of posture you have to have to be able to do that. And that, and that would really represent, I think the humility that scripture talks about that we need. Yeah, I think this, the heart of this is be someone who asks questions. So be someone that asks questions of people who know you about what they think. But then also, I think adding to this is, is also be someone who asks questions of other people. And so if you do go out with someone for some advice, ask them, how did you handle this stage of parent? What are some things you learned? Tell me things you messed up mm. on yeah. and be someone who asks questions. I was with just this last week, I was with a group of young moms 
And they had so many questions. And it was so refreshing to be with people like that because of course I don't have all the answers to everything, but a lot of the questions they brought up, I was like, oh yeah, I had a kid that did that too. Yeah, and you have years and years. <laughs> you've and mentioned years that. You've and mentioned years it, of actually. wisdom. Honey. <laughs> but they were they were all so humble and they they were asking good questions. And so be someone that asks questions of people and and listen. Be good listeners. Yeah. And the different sources of feedback could be it could be your spouse, right? Sometimes and that might be the best place because they know you well. Maybe asking your spouse, hey, here's your opportunity. And it's not in the middle of conflict. It's not when we're already arguing about something, but I'm going to open myself up when things are nice and calm and I'm maybe a little more open to your feedback. But tell me, where am I, you know, where am I doing well as a parent? Maybe and where am I struggling? Where where do you have some advice for me? Maybe it's your parents. That could be another source of wisdom. And uh, and for some of us, God has given us wise parents uh, that we can go to for some help and advice and wisdom. Maybe it's not in the family, immediate family. Maybe it's uh, an older couple at your church or uh, you know, a couple that you know that, that could provide some more mentoring. And you and I just have to be a little more intentional in going and asking those people uh, because there's a lot of older people that would love to share their wisdom, but they they don't want to maybe feel like they're imposing on you. And they've seen that in maybe younger generations, there's a resistance to, to that. Yeah. Uh, and so you may have to go and ask an older couple. And this is why the church is so valuable. Mm. While, why being a part of your local church is not an option. And being a part of a church that has multi-generations all different kinds of families and cultures in those families is so good because we need each other. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have parents that you can ask for wisdom and advice, go to older parents in your church yeah. and older Christians that you know. And, yeah. and this is the beauty of community. It's how we're supposed to live. It's what God has provided as a way for us to feel love and to be pushed and to grow. He's given us other people around us. Yeah, and now look, we do recognize that there is a dearth of wisdom in our culture. There is a huge lack of wisdom. And some of us, and we, we have talked to parents like this who feel a little bit like they're on an island. They, they don't have some of that rich community. They don't have a good church body that they've been able to find and plug mm -hmm. into. And so they're lacking in sources of wisdom. And of course, we would say, all right, scriptures first and foremost, but there are some good books out there and good resources and good podcasts like the Maven Parent <laughs> podcast, uh, where you can hopefully find additional resources. And so you may need to go outside of family and, and friends if the, the, you're lacking sources of wisdom there as well. Yeah. Or if you just, you just need a lot of help or you just, you know, have a specific issue you want help in. And I've, I've mentioned before, but m my favorite parenting, like practical parenting books are books by Dr. Dobson. These were written in like the 70s and 80s. The Strong-Willed Child, Dare to Discipline, Bringing Up Boys, and then there's one Bringing Up Girls. I, I think these books are awesome. I think they're filled with wisdom that 50 years later, you know, and that because they have truth, that they are really good source. So I find these books still and give them yeah. out to parents. I find them in used bookstores or wherever. And and I I think they have really good wisdom in there. So yeah. those are whenever I'm asked about parenting books, I go back to these old ones. But I I do love them. I think they're full of really good advice and wisdom. Yeah. So there's there are sources of wisdom out there. And so I think uh, the encouragement here is to be a teachable parent, mm -hmm. to be someone who's constantly growing uh, and learning and open to voices and open to correction. And in doing so, clothing ourselves 
uh, with humility, like scripture says. Maven exists to help the next generation know truth, pursue goodness, and create beauty for the cause of Christ. To find out more, check out maventruth.com.